Hello everyone, Brad from Prodigal Overland here. I am super excited about today's video and I mean that because today we're talking about this Jeep behind me. Um, I'm going to be giving you a real world review of a 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk Edition with a V8. So stick around and see what's coming next. One of the things I want to talk about today is why I think this vehicle is the best family adventure off-roading overlanding vehicle out there okay when it comes to towing when it comes to highway capability when it comes to off-highway off-road capability for the price point that you're at I don't think you're gonna find a better vehicle okay and that's what I want to talk about today now before we start let me First of all, acknowledge, yes, there are absolutely vehicles that tow better. Yes, there are probably, well, not probably, there are better off-road vehicles. And maybe some vehicles that have are smooth on the highway, definitely some vehicles with better cargo capacity. But what I'm trying to show today is that when it, you take all of that into account, okay, this Jeep's ability to go off-road, to tow, to go highway, to do all of those things, it can do all of those things and it can do them well. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the engine, okay? So actually, I've owned two Jeep Grand Cherokees. So the first one we got was a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. It did have the air suspension. Um, it was the V6. And we had that, we took that up to Colorado, but when we decided, we when I got that, I was thinking we were gonna have maybe a small teardrop thing or one of these off-road teardrops. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, but then my wife kind of stepped in and said, we need a bathroom. We've got three kids, a couple preteens. We can't make it in one of these little teardrops, which to be fair, was probably like one of the best feedback, uh, not the best, but it was, it was really good feedback from my wife. So we started looking at bigger RVs. Um, and once we did that, I'm like, we should probably get the V8. Um, so, and as I got in depth more with, with some of the different models of, um, the Jeep Grand Cherokees, cause I think at the time there was like 11 different models. Now there's seven. Um, we wanted a bigger engine, but also I wanted the limited slip differential. So I really started to look at the Trailhawk, which had that, um, and also has the V8. All right. So here it is. This is our 5.7 V8 Hemi sitting here in our Trailhawk. Okay. There's a 3.6, um, Pentastar six liter and then the V8. And so this is the Hemi. Um, honestly, both vehicles, the 3.6 is very peppy. Um, this, the, honestly, this, this kind of feels like a beast when you're driving, especially when you're towing with it. Um, it, it does really, really well. Okay. I believe this engine puts out about 360 or 390 horsepower. Okay. Um, this, this is actually a very similar model. There's a 5.7 V8 that actually goes in the Ram truck. Okay. So this is, this is not a small engine. Okay. Very capable. I think the towing capacity on this Jeep Grand Cherokee is right at 7,200 pounds. Okay. So stepping into the car here, um, like I said, we, we were towing quite a bit with, with this Jeep. Okay. Um, like I said, it's rated to tow 7,200 pounds. Our Rockwood Roo comes in at just, uh, 6,300 pounds when it's fully loaded. Okay. The Jeep Grand Cherokee does not come with a brake controller. It comes with a prep for it, um, but it, it does not actually come with a brake controller. So one of the things we did, let me show you here, um, was I installed a brake controller, kind of right here. Let me zoom in, try to get that in focus. This is the uh, Tecancha P3 brake controller. Okay, I kind of have it tucked right in here under the dash. This was, again, um, I am by no means an expert on cars or installing aftermarket products, but this was pretty easy. Um, so I did was able to install this by myself, and honestly, this it's fantastic. Okay, 
um, I've been very, very happy with, with this brake controller. The other thing we needed to do with what we were towing was get um, anti-sway bars installed on the trailer and then on the Jeep. Um, so you definitely, definitely want to have those. But as far as mod modifications that I made um, to the Jeep to be able to tow our Rockwood Roo, which again, I said, like I said, comes in around 6,300 pounds if it's fully loaded, um, was just the brake controller and then the sway bars on the back. Now, um, we picked up our trailer in Ohio. We towed it down to Texas. From Texas, we went up into Colorado and to Utah with it and then back down to Texas when we sold our house and then have towed it all the way out to Pennsylvania from Texas. So we've actually done quite a bit of towing in windy weather, normal weather um, with the Jeep. It's got plenty of horsepower to pull. That's not the issue at all. Um, honestly, if it's really windy, even with the sway bars on there, I had to slow down some things get a little, I don't know if you've ever towed, but um, because it is a shorter wheelbase vehicle, um, and we're kind of pushing the upper end of its towing capacity. Um, it gets a little squirrely sometimes. So I, that would be kind of the only downside. But you get some things as far as, I guess you would say, luxury or comfort. Okay, this Jeep comes with the heated and air-conditioned seats up front. Okay, heated and ventilated. Um, heated heated leather-wrapped steering wheel. It's got the entertainment system in there, comes with the Sirius XM, um, which we have going. We got the safety package, so it's got, um, let's see, adaptive cruise control. It's got the lane sense warnings. What else? It's got the uh, OnStar, we don't have that hooked up. Um, so I guess if we, if we go tumbling off, we're gonna be in trouble there. But um, again, very nice trimmed out seats, very comfortable. I've spent a lot of miles rolling in these. Okay, swinging out to the back of the vehicle, okay, where the kids sit, which is why this is not looking too pretty. Um, there's actually heated seats for uh, two passengers in the back. The center one is not heated, okay? If you only got two people rolling, it's got this nice little armrest that can flip down, okay? We were able to find one, and let me tell you, I did a national search for this to find ev find a Jeep with everything I wanted. But ours has the rear DVD entertainment system, which is on both sides, which is magical, magical for the amount of hours that we have in the car, okay? It comes with the Bluetooth headphones that the kids slip on, and it has turned car rides into much more of a pleasure, um, having that ability to have them kind of tune out in the back. Okay, what else? It's got a remote start, which is super sweet. If it's cold, you know, you hit the button, the remote start. If it's below a certain temperature, the heated seats, the heated steering wheel goes on. If it's above, you can get the ventilated seats to kick on. Okay, so let's talk safety. So as far as active safety features, like I said, this Jeep has the lane sense warning. So if I start swerving out of the lane, it will actually correct me and put me back into the lane. That's been good when I'm maybe a little bit tired and, and driving. Um, it's not good when you're going through construction and there's all kinds of like lane paints because I, I don't know if it goes by the paint on the road or what, but it gets funky when you are going out um, into construction areas. So I usually turn it off. There's a button just to turn off for that. It's got the adaptive, adaptive cruise control in the front. Okay, that is pretty sweet. All right, and then it's got the backup assist where the sensor's on the back. If I'm backing up, it'll actually stop the vehicle if there's something behind the vehicle. Again, with the hitch on the back, I had to kind of turn that off because it would feel like I was going to slam into something, okay? But it's a really nice feature if you're not having a hitch on the back. One of the areas that the Jeep takes a hit is on cargo capacity, okay? When I was doing my reviews, it was like, oh, it's not the best cargo capacity that's out there. But even still, we are able to fit two large dogs, okay? We've got a, uh, let's see, we've got a 100-pound Rhodesian Ridgeback and then kind of a, a lab mix that both are in here. We put some beds down. Um, and they're able to both sit comfortably in here. Okay, one thing I did do to kind of keep them in the back is I put in a pet divider, okay, so that there's they're not squirreling up front with us. Um, so they have their own area in the back, um, and, and they seem very, very comfortable when we're traveling. All right, now for the fun part, let's talk about off-road capability. Like I said before, depending on where I put this into the video, um, or if I haven't said it yet, 
but if I said before I haven't said it, this has an air suspension in it, okay? So this has the ability with a touch of a button to raise the whole vehicle up, okay? So right now it's in kind of park mode, push of a button and the whole vehicle actually will come up, okay? Um, other things that I've added, okay, were the rock rails. There is a um, Trailhawk version that comes with the rock rails. If you plan to do any kind of off-roading, um, either get the one with the rock rails or have them installed. The ones I put on are from Chief Products. Okay, there's a video, install video on that on our channel. I can put the, I think, try to get a link to it up in here. Been very happy with these. Um, let me get in close for you. So we put these on kind of before we left. All right, and I, in Moab, we had a couple hits on these. So I was really glad that I had them. They protect the body really well. Other thing we've done for extra cargo capacity has been the Gobi roof rack. Again, there's a video on that on our channel, on the install for that. Um, that was not bad at all to put on. It's super sturdy. Um, we right now have a couple straps up there. Now this might sound dumb, but the one reason I really wanted to go with the Gobi was because um, we've got this pretty panoramic uh, uh, what do they call it? moonroof or sunroof in there and most of the the racks that we found covered that up which you know being the guy i am i'm like well, that's ridiculous if i want to open it up i want to look at it so gobi actually has um a cut out there that you're not blocking it and you can and then they also sell an additional insert that you can put in here if, if you need the extra cargo space so sitting up top on the Gobi roof rack for extra storage, we just went and got the Plano um, heavy duty sportsman trunk. It's been raining uh, pretty much nonstop in the last two days. We drove through all kinds of rain on the highway. So I actually looked at, before I made, started filming this, I'm like, well, I should check to see if you know any water got in there. And actually no water got in there at all. And we have, I know there's, um, some other fancy cases that they make that were, and you know, we actually bought one um, to put on there that was way more expensive, um, but these have been working working great. All right, swinging around back. Also the Gobi ladder. I had a couple of questions on how sturdy this is. It is very sturdy, okay? It, I'm able to climb up there. I'm able to stand on the rack. Um, it doesn't move. The whole car will shake before this thing moves, okay? So that's been great to have very sturdy. All right, another great thing about off-road capability on the Trailhawk is it comes standard with skid plates on the bottom. Okay, that is standard. The rock rails um, is an option, at least when I was looking to buy these, but you don't have to worry about getting extra armor on the bottom. It's got the limited slip differential. You can get them with the rock rails. You can't get it with a Gobi rack, but you can pay for that, and it's not too bad to install. Now, I had mentioned earlier the air suspension. So the air suspension, um, so there's actually airbags in here. And so when I'm towing, it'll actually self-level. So when I was picked up the trailer, I was a little bit nervous when the whole back end went down. But as soon as I started the car, the airbags filled up and brought the whole thing level. So there's actually, um, when I'm going highway, there's a highway setting where it drops it down a little bit to be more aerodynamic. And then when we do venture out off-road, I hit a button. Let me show you where that button is. So here's kind of your off-road select, okay? So with a touch of a button over there on the right, this can raise up to, I think it's two inches. There's an off-road one, an off-road two. The off-road two setting gives you the most ground clearance, but those airbags are full. And so it is definitely a stiff ride. So um, if you need it, it's good to have, but you know, generally off-road one is much more comfortable. Okay, and then we can go into four low. There's a traction control here. Okay, for snow, sand, mud, and rock. We've definitely used that. And then this button here is like a like a hill descent kind of button. So if we're going off-road and we're going down a real steep incline, I can actually set the cruise control for something really low, like a you know, one or two miles an hour, and it will maintain that speed. All right, this button here is a fun button, okay? Put you in sport mode. Um, this button here, Eco, so it has the ability when you're doing highway, when you're not towing, um, it's in Eco mode. So it can shut down, I think, up to four cylinders. Um, when we're towing, we hit that, and then we've got the full power of the V8 going. Here's your lane sense, on or off. 
parking on or off, and then it's actually got a parking assist too. One of the most important things if you're gonna go off-roading is having a good set of tires under you. I did switch out the tires. The tires, it does come with um, kind of all-terrain tires, but I kind of changed them out. Okay, so these are the uh, Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. Um, I kept the same size. Tires are the 265-60 R18. I do believe that you're able to fit um, a little bit bigger tire. I think you can go up to a 265-65 R18. Um, I've seen that on Instagram. Uh, a few of the Trailhawk owners have bumped up. But these tires have been great on-road. Traction's been wonderful. Off-road, they've been fantastic. Um, you know, when you get an all-terrain tire, they tell you that it can be much more, uh, like noisier on highway. And I've not experienced that. Um, it, these are, they ride great on the highway. They've got excellent grip off-road. So I would highly recommend these. Again, these, these are the Falcon Wild Peak, um, all-terrain tires. And when I was pricing out these tires, what was fantastic is, I mean, as far as cost, they were one of, I mean, one of the lowest costs, but the reviews were fantastic. So I went with them. Again, very glad I did. All right, so, so as far as off-road modifications that I've made for it, um, the Jeep Grand Cherokee so far has just been the roof rack for extra storage, um, the rock rails, which you definitely want to get, and tires, which are a must. Okay, coming down the line, um, I'm probably going to be doing an install video on, on uh, Chief Products makes a front, lower front guard. If you have a Jeep, you know. If you don't, let me show you. So this lower front portion here, um, where these hooks are, will actually come off. And Jeep recommends that if you're going to do off-roading, that you go ahead and do that. So it's kind of a pain to get off. I did bump it once in Moab. So um, I actually got a lower front guard coming from Chief Products that will um, kind of protect that off-road and be a little more stout. And then I won't have to take this plastic part off and put it back on whenever we're doing some off-road. So another really cool thing about the Jeep as far as off-road capability is it's got this whole section in your navigation of off-road pages that will tell you the pitch of your vehicle, um, as far as you know how, how the Jeep is tilting, rolling, that kind of thing. All right, so here's the off-road pages. So right now it's telling me my pitch is about a degree. I am parked on a little embankment, so my roll is at seven degrees. You can go into suspension. I'm at a normal ride height right now. Uh, if we hit this button right here and go up, it should tell me that once we get there, okay, we're raising up. It'll tell me that I'm in off-road one then once, once it fills, the airbags fill up. So there again on your dashboard, it'll tell you that you're going up. Right, so there we go, off-road one. Okay, and now if you're also, if you change into, like if you're limited, slip differentials locking in, it's gonna tell you that too. Um, there's the select track, I'm in auto right now. Go to mud. Okay, looks like it's telling me my altitude, my GPS location. Uh, go to accessories, right there you have your coolant, your oil, your battery voltage, oil pressure, all that. All right, steering able, uh, rear differential, active. Okay, let me go back to auto here. All right, so that's, I mean, and that's that comes standard with the vehicle. I've seen in other videos where they're using aftermarket, you know, other, like on a 4Runner, they've got this aftermarket product where they're showing that. I don't know if, if 4Runner's got it now standard, but again, all of that comes standard with the Trailhawk. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention about these Jeeps um, which is another huge selling point for me is we actually picked a 2018 up and it was used when I got it. Now, um, for better or worse, the Jeep Grand Cherokee doesn't seem to hold its, its, uh, resale value very well. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting one of these brand new. I was able to go on, um, through car guru, put in a national search, pick out what I wanted. Um, and again, I'm not being reimbursed by anybody at this point but on car guru i could put in the year the model the options i wanted we wanted a rear dvd entertainment system i wanted the rhino color um and i can 
confidently say, um, at least on an online search, that this was the Jeep, it's yelling at me, this was the Jeep um, in the country that had everything I wanted, okay? And so, but I was able, this is 2018, um, the list price on this, I think was upper 50s, and we were able to come in close to $20,000 less um, for this vehicle, okay? And so, I would highly, highly recommend um, they are not a rare vehicle. You probably see these all the time. I know they get knocked for being a mall crawler. Um, it's pretty rare that I will see see someone um, using a Jeep for towing. When we, all the towing we've done, I've never seen another Jeep towing. Um, certainly anything we're towing, as big as we're towing. Um, and most often, they don't have any kind of setup. So if you're a Jeep Grand Cherokee owner, certainly if you're a Trailhawk owner, um, you have so much there okay so use it for what it's made for um, but again uh, I would highly recommend getting a model that's a year or two older with low miles um, we got an extended warranty plan on ours so if something does happen I'm covered up to I think a hundred thousand miles um, but it's a pretty big perk you know when I looked at the Toyotas um, when I looked at getting maybe a used Land Cruiser or something like that even for one that had lots of miles and was several years old they just held their value so high that it was out of the price range for me. But um, the, the Jeeps, are, like I said, they're the, uh, maybe the undiscovered gem out there. But you can pick these up. Um, like I said, they're pretty, pretty common to see. Um, you can pick them up used with just some miles on it for, for easily 10000 10, less, 15000 less um, than you would pay for one that's brand new. So, again, highly recommend that. We've had no issues. Anyway, guys. Um, probably about it for me on this video okay again in my personal opinion after thousands of miles in this vehicle this vehicle can do it all it can tow it's comfortable on the road it's got great luxury options it's great off-road um, and so while I know there's other vehicles that can probably tow more well definitely vehicles that can tow more vehicles that can maybe do some more off-road things if you're looking for it all. If you've got a family, if it's more than just you and a wife or you and a significant other or just you, um, again, seats five comfortably. We got some growing kids. Our kids are 13, uh, 10, and 7 right now. Two big dogs and they all fit back in there. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, you can hit the thumbs up down button, but give me a comment, feedback, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Hope you have a great day.